so a couple of days ago, actually, on um, uh, April 22nd, I tweeted, um, in, I'm paraphrasing here, I feel like I blinked and McDonald's shares went from $100 to 125 mm-hmm. without my knowledge. They were hanging out at a hundred bucks for like a year. For a long back time. Back when though. we were, and we were just like, yeah, I don't know. They're not cool, as cool as Chipotle. They're just hanging out. And then they introduced all day breakfast. Revolutionary. Which, I, is that the reason for the 25% gain? Like, <laughs> I think it's part of it. I think that's absolutely part of the conversation. And yeah, just again, uh, I t- took a look at the numbers. Last year, shares were, or excuse me, shares are up 33% in the last 12 months, which is pretty darn impressive. That's- uh, and and to to your point earlier, whenever we talked about McDonald's, it was very much it was uh, boring. Say it, it. poo poo. <laughs> uh, it's McDonald's. You know, it, it's old school. We've got Chipotle up here. We've got McDonald's down here. That's been the conversation for a long time. To a certain extent, it's still the conversation. But to their credit, McDonald's has done a lot to turn around their business. And like you said, I think a large part of it has to do with the all day breakfast. You know, that's one thing that Chipotle doesn't have those breakfast menus. Uh, and and I think McDonald's does breakfast better than a lot of its competitors out there. Uh, it's also been benefiting from the uh, was it the McPick two, where you get two yep. uh, menu items for something like five dollars uh, which is again it's good value it's a good bargain for for that customer base that uh, McDonald's is looking for uh, yeah it's been a heck of a turnaround honestly uh, and I, this is just my opinion at least I think the turnaround has a lot to do with Steve Eastbrook the CEO who came in in March of 2015 almost a year ago mm-hmm. when it was still as you said down at a hundred dollars or so per share now it's it was way just hanging up. out we were talking about it as a dividend just, stock it just and that meandered was yeah. for a long time there and then Steve Eastbrook came in uh, and he's been great he's uh, he's been at uh, McDonald's since the 90s. He actually left for a short period of time and got some fast casual dining experience over in England, then came back as the chief brand officer and eventually became CEO. And almost as soon as he steps in, things start turning around. They start uh, revolutionizing their menu with the uh, all-day breakfast, with the McPick 2s. They start uh, revamping stores. I think most importantly, and people always kind of uh, forget about this, out of of McDonald's 36,000 around the world locations, 30,000 them are 30,000 of them are owned by franchisees. You got to keep those franchisees happy when your stock price and when your sales are just kind of meandering along for years and years and years. You're not going to be happy. People aren't going to be lining up to, you know, own these stores for you. Now suddenly Steve comes in, shares start going up, stores get revitalized, they bring in new menu items, start seeing sales go up at those franchisees. Now they're happy. Now people are starting to line up again for those McDonald's franchises. So again, I think a large part of this turnaround has to go to Steve Eastbrook. I think he's a huge part of this. Did either of you hear those rumors that the franchisees were actually fighting the all-day breakfast move? No, tell me more. It was just, there. There was a rumor, and I I suspect it was because of like supply chain inventory management. Mm. Like, okay, how many egg McMuffins do we keep on the shelf at four p.m.? Sure. Like, what are we gonna do here? But uh, I bet they're happy now. <laughs> well, it comes down <laughs> no. to the fact that <clears throat> when you add a major, you add basically a whole day part to the menu, and you have to serve that all day. You know, you don't have so much grill space. Yeah. And when you add those products, it makes it much more complicated. And that's actually, you know, that's absolutely what happened. The franchise is frustrated, but once you know they saw the benefit of the increased foot traffic and the fact that you know the McPick two promotion, for example, you know they hit that on two tiers. They had the one that was for two dollars for the super value conscious, and they had one for five dollars McPick two for five. And you know, management has talked about how they're seeing that being able to. Uh, Essentially, appeal to two groups where some people will go in and split that, so it's still a really great value for them, but it's still, uh, you know, in step essentially with very similar promotions from Wendy's and Burger King, where they're doing these value meals again. Mm. And I think that's perfect for McDonald's because they're returning to their roots. Where, in the end, I think most people recognize the fact that it's not the best food that you're getting there. What? But wait. What? <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! <clears throat> yeah. But it comes down to the fact that they want that value and they want the consistency. And you know, just a quote that I saw recently from Easterbrook, actually, where he talks about simplified menu boards, new crew training procedures. Um, really, they're looking into every single detail, like font size on the printers, the receipts, and he says things like the primary driver of customer satisfaction, getting it right, hot, fresh food, friendly service. Just hearing management mentioned these things again in their calls it's like okay they're refocused on the right things and this is a really nice uh, trajectory that I can think can be long term for them 